Welcome again. So today we will discuss first MPV reduction and then metal catalyzed hydrogenation. So first we will discuss MPV reduction which is called Meruin Pond of Valle reduction discovered by Meruin and Smith and separately by Valle in 1925. Reduction of ketones and aldehydes to their corresponding alcohols utilizing aluminum alkoxide catalyst in the presence of sacrificial alcohol. An advantage of the MPV reduction lies in its high chemoselectivity and its use of a cheap environmentally friendly metal catalyst. This is opposite of open air oxidation which we have already discussed. Jan MPV reduction is this that an alcohol which uh, is the hydride source and this is the ketone which will be the reduced so this is R3 and now this aluminum alkoxide catalyst we will see that the carbonyl compound is binding to the aluminum and this alcohol also binding to the aluminum because O1 OAR is replaced by this alcohol and now this hydride delivery will take place so that R3 this R4 the ketone is going to alcohol and the alcohol is going to ketone. So this process this ketone to alcohol this process is called MPV reduction. On the other hand, the alcohol going to ketone, this R1, R2, the alcohol is going to ketone, so this is called open air oxidation. So this alcohol is going to ketone, which is open air oxidation, and ketone going to alcohol, this is MPV reduction. So the mechanism is similar like open air oxidation, here this aluminum trialkoxide species is formed, and here this is the actually this starts from this one, and now the ketone is binding to the aluminum and this species is forming. So starting from aluminum alkoxide, the carbonyl oxygen is coordinated to achieve the tetra quadrant aluminum intermediate 2. And after that, if this goes to a six member cyclic transition state like open air oxidation, this hydride delivery takes place and this ketone going to alcohol. And between the intermediate 2 and 3, the hydride is transferred to the carbonyl from the alkoxyl ligand via a pericyclic mechanism. At this point, the new carbonyl dissociates and get the tricoordinated aluminum species 4. So this ketone is eliminated and now this uh, alkoxide is forming and this is usually as a solvent. So this is in more quantity, this will displace. Uh, alcohol solution displace the newly reduced carbonyl to regenerate catalyst 1. So this is the product. So this is product and this was the starting material. So the starting material ketone is going to the alcohol. So alcohol is liberating at the last step because this is the product alcohol and because this is the alcohol which is hydride source so this is generally as a solvent this is large quantity so this displace this alkoxide reagent to get this one stereoselectivity by using chiral alcohol we can get a stereoselective reduction because in the ketone reduction you generate a chiral center suppose this chiral center is generating when you reduce this carbonyl compound now you see this alcohol as a chiral center this is r center there is another extra chiral center also is there. Now when this hydride delivery, this is intramolecular, intramolecular hydride delivery and here you see this is actually a 8 member ring is forming but this hydrogen, this is the, this actually this uh, hydrogen, so this is the alcohol here, this is binding with aluminum isopropoxide here and now this you can see this is the six membered uh, transition state this is the hydride which is delivered to the carbonyl compound and this takes up this position and now this alcohol becoming ketone and this chiral center newly generated is from the top phase so you get the S alcohol this is the single isomer is formed on the other hand, if you consider this alcohol, where the stereochemistry is just opposite, so either earlier case it was R, now it is S, and now the hydride delivery will take place from this way, and now if you see this transition state and this transition state are mirror images. So mirror images each other. And now whatever earlier was up, this oxygen oxygen, now they are down like this and now the hydride delivery takes place so that you get R alcohol and this is also 
selective so highly selective so the, the with the chiral alcohol you can generate the chiral center in a specific way also by ligand it is possible like this ketone and this is the isopropyl alcohol and now with this vinyl catalyst and tie uh, methyl aluminum which is also catalyst n mole percent you get this alcohol in 99 percent yield and e is 80 percent so what is the mechanism of this reaction so vinyl first reacts with dimethyl aluminum to generate the o l methyl maybe and then isopropanol comes isopropanol generate this aluminum isopropoxide catalyst so this is the active catalyst and now hydride delivery will take place so where from the hydride delivery take place now if you see the isopropoxide this is the hydride and this is the hydride that will deliver to the carbonyl compound. Now it is binding, aluminum is binding to a chiral ligand. So everything is chiral, this transition state is chiral. Now this ketone will take the orient in a such a fashion that this will be less sterically position so that it will face the less steric and that's why this AR is in the axial, R is in equatorial. Now this is the hydride from the isopropanol and this delivery will take place such a way that you get a, a moderately enhanced selective a, up to 80 percent the alcohol also in, in this way ketamines can also be reduced like this this is the phosphine oxide a protecting group in phosphoryl oxygen is there and now four equivalent of isopropanol with here it is not catalytic 1.2 equivalent dimethyl aluminum and 1.2 equivalent s vinyl you get this amine product with 79 to 85% yield and 93 to 98% E and R, R1 can be aryl alkyl and this is the uh, transition state here also you can see this imine nitrogen is coordinated with aluminum and this isopropanyl oxygen also coordinating aluminum and this is the isopropanyl and this hydrogen which is delivered to the imine and now this transition state is chiral because of this ligand is chiral and the hydride delivery takes place such a way that you get high enhanced selectivity for this product. Also chiral samarium catalyst for the asymmetric MPPV reduction can be used. So this is the isopropanol with catalyst and this reaction this is going to be this alcohol and acetone you are getting a product byproduct of this reaction. And now with this samarium catalyst you get 100% in and 97% E. So here you can see this is a chiral C2 symmetric ligand, C2 symmetric ligand. C2 symmetric ligand is binding with samarium and you get high enantiomer selectivity 97% E you get for this product. Now we will discuss hydrogenation. Chemical reaction between molecular hydrogen and another compound usually in the presence of catalyst such as nickel, iron, platinum, palladium, rhodium, ruthenium. Different metals can be used, reduces double and triple bonds in hydrocarbons. Mainly catalyst, homogeneous catalyst, heterogeneous catalyst, hydrogenation of double bond is thermodynamically favorable reaction. So this is the double bond reduction generally we perform with hydrogen. And if you see this diagram energy and reaction coordinate and this green color is the uncatalyzed reaction and pink is with catalyzed reaction. So what you see with catalytic reaction the transition state energy gets lower. So you need lesser activation energy needed for the reacting molecules to reach to the transition state. The addition of a catalyst enables the hydrogen reaction to occur, otherwise it is not possible. Because the transition state is so high, without catalyst it is not possible. Though the reaction is exothermic, as you can see, alkene is here and alkene is uh, high, so this reaction is exothermic. However, to get the transition state, it is not possible in uncatalyzed version. Catalyst Hydrogen is unreactive towards organic compounds with rare exception. Catalysts are usually classified into two categories, homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysts. So in the homogeneous catalyst, the catalyst dissolves in the solvent that contains the unsaturated substrate. It forms coordination complexes which activates both the unsaturated substrate and hydrogen. So this is very important. These complexes contain platinum group, especially rhodium and iridium. As for example, dichloro, tisiphenyl, phosphine, ruthenium, craftic catalyst, RH2Cl2COD2, 
to yes i should have a fox with rhodia maybe and wilkinson catalyst heterogeneous catalyst heterogeneous catalysts are solids that are suspended in the same solvent with the substrate or treated with gaseous substrate so these are solid heterogeneous catalyst they are generally suspended not in solution phase of the catalyst is different from the phase of reactor example 5% ruthenium on activated carbon 1% platinum on alumina base metal catalyst is such as rani nickel linear catalyst that we will discuss also so there are several advantages of homogeneous catalyst first advantage it is mild condition non polar solvent which dissolve hydrogen better and also less catalyst is required each molecule is available for reaction and not just surface so you don't don't need a whole surface like heterogeneous here you need a molecule particular amount of molecule advantage improved or complementary selectivity far more predictable advantage directed hydrogenation also is possible and asymmetric version also possible and mechanism can be well understood for homogeneous catalysis so this is the homogeneous catalysis wilkinson catalyst craftic catalyst wilkinson is rhodium and this is iridium based asymmetric hydrogenation rhodium based that we will discuss non coordinate asymmetric catalyst iridium based titanium based monohydride catalyst we will discuss these points transfer hydrogenation with ruthenium and heterogeneous catalyst we will discuss linear catalyst which is palladium then h2 pto2 h2 palladium charcoal Rosenman reaction we will discuss palladium BSO4 with hydrogen and rani nickel and these are the uh, functional groups that can be reduced with the catalytic hydrogenation and this if you go from the top to the down the this become hardest so benzene is the hardest to reduce because of of course it is aromatic so also esters are difficult to reduce it because with LH you can easily reduce esters are difficult naphthalene derivative also difficult nitriles also difficult so what is easy na acid chloride is easy rn na2 you can reduce alkyne reduce aldehyde alkene ketone you can reduce also a displacement reaction that benzyl group is liberated here arch3 and rh so uh, toluene derivative is liberated and alcohol is generated also rcn can be reduced so these are that difficult but this can be also done that we will see so acid chloride is the easiest reduction possible with catalytic hydrogenation so first we will discuss alkene hydrogenation for alkene hydrogenation there are two main types of homogeneous catalysis one is dihydride catalyst and another is monohydride catalyst so in dihydride catalyst this is the metal ligand complex this reacts with hydrogen and this is the dihydride species is formed so in dihydride catalyst this dihydride species will form an example is wilkinson catalyst this is chloro rhodium tin 3 phosphines are there so here also hydrogen adds pure to substrate so hydrogen adds to this dihydride species pure to the substrate and in craftis catalyst this is the craftis catalyst iridium cod pcy3 pyridine and hexafluorophosphate is there here substrate adds before hydrogen that we will see in details later and in monohydride catalyst this is the monohydride species and monohydride plus hydrogen plus alkene will give this kind of uh, inserted intermediate and the uh, example is lnmn hydride so hydride species is like this h ruthenium chloro 3 phosphine then cp2 cyclopentadiene titanium hydride this species can act as monohydride catalyst so first what is the mechanism of dihydride catalyst so as we have seen that mln this metal ligand complex reacts with hydrogen to generate the dihydride species so this is the active catalyst actually so dihydride species is formed and oxidative addition is uh, happening here metal gets plus to more oxidation state now when it reacts with alkene so first the coordination will happen coordination with the metal and the pi bond of the olefin and then the insertion happen 
to get this intermediate and this one uh, if you put hydrogen more because the hydrogen will attack to this and then of course the reductive elimination will happen and then you get your alkane and your the metal ligand complex back and this procedure is followed in case of Wilkinson catalyst. In Wilkinson catalyst the hydrogen adds before substrate. Hydrogen adds before substrate. Now in the case of crafty kind of things, so here MLN metal ligand complex is binding with olefin first. So here this coordination is happening. And now hydrogen comes to generate this coordination again because hydrogen the oxidation uh, of metal is happening here by hydrogen and this is followed in crafty catalyst and then insertion will happen and after that the hydrogen will come of course here hydrogen and then the reductive elimination uh, you get the alkene and metal ligand complex is formed. So what is the main difference here substrate adds before hydrogen so this is important substrate is adding before hydrogen hydrogen is adding later and in monohydrate catalyst this is the coordination is happening with the metal hydride and alkene and now one to insertion will happen like this and you get this species and now hydrogen will add this intermediate we have seen already in dihydride so only difference you start with a ligand metal hydride complex and now oxidative addition is happening metal center is oxidized here and reductive elimination will generate the product alkene and you get your metal ligand hydride complex back. Wilkinson catalyst first we will discuss this is the rhodium trichlorotis triphenyl phosphine rhodium 1 the charge is coming because of chlorine and set is square planar 16 electron complex oxidation state of rhodium is plus 1 it selectively reduces alkenes or double bonds that is main application and what is the synthesis now rhodium chloride 3 h 2 triphenyl phosphine you can get this uh, Wilkinson catalyst which is chlorotris triphenyl phosphine rhodium what is the mechanism of this reaction uh, with Wilkinson catalyst? So this is the Wilkinson catalyst and this is solvent may come first one PPH3 may liberate it and this intermediate is forming. Now the hydrogen comes. So we have seen in Wilkinson catalyst hydrogen adds before substrate. So that is why it is happening and oxidative addition is happening so rhodium and now is becoming 3 and now the ligand dissociation will give you penta coordinated species and now alkene will coordinate so in the penta coordinated species after ligand dissociation or solvent whatever you get the alkene coordination like this so get a, a six coordinated rhodium and now migratory insertion will happen one hydride will go to the alkene and you get a penta coordinated species and now ligand dissociation will happen to get this hexa coordinated species so PPH3 will add and now from this hexa coordinated the deductive elimination will happen so these two groups eliminate and now you get your actually you get here this one uh, get here and again by solvent this will form. So, this is the overall mechanism the oxidative addition of hydrogen the ligand dissociation this and alkene coordination migratory insertion is happening this is the first one hydride is coming to the double bond to get a alkyl species here and now after a ligand association it becomes 6 coordinated and from there reductive elimination is possible. So, 6 becomes 4 here 4 coordinated and you get your alkene product. This is the reactivity for alkenes. So here you can see styrene derivatives are more reactive than monosubstituted olefin, then cyclic olefin, then one one disubstituted olefins, then one two disubstituted olefins. This is cis and this is trans. So this will see the cis olefins are reactive than trans 
and then try substituting. So what you see, the steric is affecting the activity. So if your olivine is highly substituted or in the sterically hindered position, then Wilkinson catalyst cannot come because the coordination is will not be possible in that case. Less substituted and sterically less hindered double bonds are selectively hydrogenated. This is an example. You can see there are two double bonds are present, this and this. And this one is in the endocyclic, this is outside and with this catalyst, Wilkinson catalyst, hydrogen benzene, you get only this product. So only this double bond is reduced. Also exocyclic double bonds are selectively hydrogenated over endocyclic bonds. Like this is endocyclic, this is exocyclic and exocyclic are more hydrogenated, selectively hydrogenated over endocyclic. Here also a hydrogen benzene is used. And cis alkenes are reduced rapidly than trans alkenes we already discussed. So this is the example. Here you can see this is a cis. This is cis olefin, this is trans olefin and selectively you get reduction of the cis double bond and trans double bond is untouched in this condition. Also isolated double bonds are rapidly hydrogenated over conjugated dienes like this is conjugation and this is isolated and the isolated double bond is reactive. So that means isolated double bond double bond is more electron rich. So electron rich double bond is reacting here. And functional groups like carbonyl, imine, NO2, aryl, CO2, R, etc. are unaffected. And this is an example here. NO2 group is there, carbonyl is there and double bond is there. Selectively, Wilkinson catalyst in hydrogen benzene reduce the double bond and these two functional groups are untouched in this condition. Also here, you can see a cyanide group present and two double bonds are there. However, this double bond is close to a tertiary center carbon. So this is more steric, more steric hindrance. That's why the Wilkinson catalyst selectively only this double bond. Terminal alkynes are hydrogenated more rapidly than terminal alkenes. So alkynes are more reactive than alkenes. And here terminal, both are terminal. However, only that alkyne is getting hydrogenated. Where 2 to 2 triphloroethanol is used also as a proton source maybe. Uh, stereospecific syn hydrometallation of the double bond followed by stereospecific reductive elimination. Thus, hydrogenation of olefins, alkynes, result in syn addition products. So, this is malic acid. Malic acid two carboxylic group are cis to each other. Now, if you do Wilkinson catalyst and D2 and benzene, then two deuterium adding to the syn fashion. So this is a meso compound because in uh, here if the scene is there that means the orientation of other groups will not change here they are cis here also cis. If this is a fumaric acid and here they are trans to each other and now with Wilkinson catalyst D2 benzene you get racemic mixture. So the racemic mixture is forming because seen addition is happening because here they are uh, trans to each other and here also they are trans and two trans products are possible so you get racemic mixture. Now we will see diastro selective reaction this is a non-borrowing system here an exocyclic olefin is there and C2H5 is there in the end position now with rhodium triphenyl phosphine that is the Wilkinson catalyst hydrogen benzene. The binding happens from the least hindered exo phase. So selectively the binding happens in exo phase. So that means steric effect is very important in Wilkinson catalyst reduction. And that's why hydride delivery takes place from the exo phase and you get endo product major. Hydride is coming from the exo phase. So top phase. So because exo phase is less hindered. 
and binding of catalyst from end of phase now this is steric group is there already ethyl group and that's why exo product will be minor here hydride from the end of phase so this product will be minor decarbonylation with wilkinson catalyst is also possible like this is a long chain aldehyde so this is hexanal hexanal on reduction with wilkinson catalyst in dichlomethane room temperature you get n pentane so one carbon less and that carbonyl is going here this is stoichiometry of the reaction here you get a carbonyl with displacement of a phosphine and this is also red and this is yellow so this decarbonylation is happening that you can understand by color also what is the mechanism of this reaction so four coordinated one ligand dissociation happens then this tri coordinated species is formed now aldehyde can add oxidative addition so earlier rhodium was one now it is three and this is penta coordination penta coordination is there now deinsertion will happen and deinsertion what happens the oxidation number increases so oxidation number increases here what happened here this co r becomes r co here you can see here and now reductive elimination is possible here so reductive elimination this hydrogen and r they liberates and this carbon stays here so you get this carbonyl species and dissociation of carbonyl ligand is not possible under normal condition that's why this catalyst is regenerated not regenerated sterically unhindered aldehyde groups are susceptible to decarbonylation also rendering the catalyst ineffective <laughs> chloro carbonyl bisphosphate phosphine rhodium carbons which is this byproduct here this one is quite stable and it is not possible to dissociate co ligand at mild temperature hence stoichiometric amount of the complex is required however with diphenyl phosphoryl azide so this is diphenyl phosphoryl azide this is the dppa so with dppa it is possible to make decarbonylation reaction catalytic as it removes co ligand from chlorocarbonyl with diphenyl phosphine rhodium complex to regenerate the active form of catalyst so this on dppa you can get this one so simply it is not possible but if you add dppa in a reaction medium then you can use this as a catalytic amount this is crafty catalyst as you can see this complex iridium complex is there cyclooctadiene is there pyridine is there and pcy3 there and hexafluorophosphate is the counter anion complex has square planar uh, molecular geometry this is orange solid the catalyst is reactive at room temperature it is much more reactive than wilkinson catalyst it can reduce hindered alkenes also so this is very important for catalytic catalyst catalytic catalyst is effective for the hydrogenation of mono di tri and tetra substitute substrate whereas wilkinson catalyst cannot catalytic catalyst catalyzes the hydrogenation of tetra substitute olefin also it gives superior directing effect for cyclic substrate and the catalyst is tolerant of weakly basic functional group such as ester but not alcohols or amines typically used in non polar non coordinating solvent like dichloromethane and this is commercially available and in catalytic catalyst this is the thing hydrogen adds h2 adds before substrate and after h2 addition this is the catalytic catalyst this is dh16 electron system so cod group is getting reduced and that is liberated and then uh, solvent is coming and here d6 system and 12 electron very unsaturated in the presence of hydrogen the coal ligand supports hydrogenation while the solvent may be loosely associated with the metal it can be replaced by just about any olefin including tri and tetra substitute so now here the olefin association will happen and this is the turnover frequency so turnover frequency in our means a number of molecules or number of moles of product 
formed in one hour divided by number of moles of catalyst so you can see in crappy catalyst simple this one this is one hexene this crappy catalyst the turnover num frequency is 6400 and here one tenth we can say catalyst also cyclohexene this is 4500 this is 700 almost one eighth and this tetra substitute olefin crafty catalyst 4000 and wilkinson catalyst zero so wilkinson catalyst does not react to it uh, tetra substitute olefin but there is high uh, reactivity with tetra substitute olefin with crafty catalyst this uh, possible also dash to selective reduction and here the hydroxy group is important for crafty catalyst this is the bicyclic compound and here enone is there and this hydrogen uh, hydrogen adds to this double bond and the facial selectivity is controlled by the hydroxy group so this is the control controlling group and you get 24 is to 1 dash to selective product so this hydride is coming from the same phase same phase here down hydroxy here also down The hydrogenation of terpene for all demonstrates the ability of compounds with directed groups like OH group to undergo dash to selective hydrogenation. This is the terpene for all system. You can see there is a hydroxy group and there is a isopropyl group. This is down, this is up, and this is the double one that will be reduced. Now this is the half chair, half chair, and there will be a methyl group actually here. methyl group will be there with the double bond and hydroxy is up and the isopropyl is down so hydride delivery will take place from the up so it will reduce and the methyl will be down and this is the methyl is down this is methyl is up so with 5% palladium charcoal ethanol you get 20 is to 80 so this product will measure so this product might be thermodynamically stable thermodynamically stable because these two groups are trans to each other and with 5% palladium charcoal cyclohexane you get almost one is one mixture however with crafty catalyst is give 99.9 of this product and 0.1 of this product so that means a crafty catalyst the hydroxy group is the controlling group hydroxy directed hydrogenation hydroxy is up that's why hydride comes hydride comes from top phase and you get this product this is a catalytic catalyst also the dash to selective hydrogenation here here a alcohol is chiral here and here is a hexacyclic double bond is present and now if we newman projection oh this is newman projection and if you look at this carbon and this carbon so this carbon is the top this is the hydroxy is there hydrogen methyl if you draw like this way and this double bond if you draw 90 degree angle with the hydroxy this double bond is there this is the ch2r group and this double bond is getting reduced and here it is also coordinated with the metal and hydroxy group so they are in perpendicular 90 degree angle however this way there is a steric repulsion is happening between this and this group alternatively here also 90 degree angle is possible and now metal is coordinated with the double bond and this way you get the anti alcohol so what happens this hydrogen now after hydrogenation this is becoming this you can draw ch2r this is the uh, methyl group that is the generated and this is the hydrogen hydrogen is coming from this way side and if you see this one in this zigzag this ch2 group and this group are trans so here ch2 group are and this are trans and now this oh and methyl are also trans so this is anti oh and methyl so this methyl this methyl is this methyl This way, yeah. So they are anti to each other. On the other hand, so this this is disfavor due to steric interaction. On the other hand, if there is a 
internal dobermann like this allyly calco hole and now you can draw same way this is the 90 degree angle this is the oh hydrogen methyl and now this is a r group there is an extra methyl group is here and due to this methyl there is a steric interaction now you can draw this way here also 90 degree angle 90 degree angle and this way this way there is no steric repulsion because this methyl is now with hydrogen so no steric interaction and this will get seen so this also you can draw with hydrogen and after reduction this group comes here this here and this this is the hydrogen and this is the CH2R and now we have seen that this and this CH2R and this A groups are trans to in zigzag they are trans to each other so you have to move it and if you move it then um, this is the OH, it's the hydrogen, and this is the methyl group. Now, if you draw CH2R here, then methyl here, hydrogen here. And now you see these two are trans to each other, and OH and methyl, this methyl is this methyl, they are cis to each other, so they are seen. Iridium based catalyst has also been used for hydrogenation in fact this asymmetric hydrogenation here this carbene complex is there oxazoline motif with iridium then iridium quad used with hydrogen 50 bar in dichromethane room temperature this allylic alcohol it gets reduced with ir1a so iridium 1a r1 is equal to 26 Diisopropyl phenyl group when R1 is there and R2 is one adamantyl group is there. This is the adamantyl group. Then you get 8.9 is 1. So anti is more. This is the match case. And this is the mismatch case. Also, this kind of alcohol when it is cis, so this is the trans actually, trans alcohol, this is cis allylic alcohol. And in this case, same condition, you get here, scene is 34, so this is match case. And anti, with N to 1A, you get 1 is to 3.4, this is the mismatch case. Now, if you are dying, this is also trans, here it has been found that iridium 1A, it gives anti sin product, so this is anti this is sin. So this product is measured with iridium 1A. And in 1A, you get sin sin. So this means sin sin. So that means OTB DPS. This is sin. And this is also sin. So this is sin sin. That is from with uh, this 21 ratio. So N to 1A, you get this product as the major. Also, uh, here a, a chiral alcohol is there, and the same catalyst can be used for diastroselective hydrogenation of this alpha beta ancestor A star. Here also you can see 1A, they are good, it is not good, but N to 1A is the enantiomer of this, you get this is the match case actually. The sin product is major, this is sin. 6 to 1 is to 1 ratio. And this is the hydrogenation of alpha beta unsaturated carboxylic acid with iridium quad and 2A. This is the ligand, ammonium. There is a nitrogen as well as a phosphine is there with uh, hydrogen 1 bar, cesium carbonate, 45 degree centigrade methanol. You get good enhanced selectivity for this alpha substituted carboxylic acid. And phenyl case, you get 98%, isopropyl 96%, n-hexyl 98%. This group 97% EE you can get. Non coordinated asymmetric catalyst is also is possible. Catalysts that do not require coordination of the substrate um, to give good EE, like this uh, catalyst, the iridium based catalyst with a barf, barf is tetrakis 3 5 trichromethyl phenyl borate. And with this catalyst, this catalyst does not bind exactly with the olivine, but you get high enhancer selectivity. There is a chiral center here. 
with only 3 mole percent catalyst, 50 bar hydrogen, you get 99 percent yield and 98 percent enhanced electricity for this product. And this is an example of monohydrate and catalyst X2 is 1 1 binaphthyl 2 2 dash diolate. So, this is binaphthyl ligand is there with butyl lithium silane. You get this is the active one, and now this is the two substituted uh, pyro. This is a imine, and now two substituted pyrrolidin is forming. in good yield as well as good enhanced selectivity. So, what is the mechanism of this reaction? So, this is the active catalyst. After this phenyl silane and butyl lithium and now your this substrate is binding to this. Here you can see a four member ring is forming and this is most stable because R is upside and in this case R is down where the it is finding a steric repulsion with the ligand. And this is the stable, then the hydride comes from the down phase and you get the chiral center here. Now again another um, four member ring is forming here which clipped under this condition. This N titanium bond is clipped and you get this product. So actually from this you get uh, this is the product and this is same like this. So, two substitute pyrrolidin is forming. Transfer hydrogenation like NPV reduction is possible like this one, 1 to diphenyl diamine with ruthenium catalyst and you get this ketone, naphthyl containing ketone to get this chiral alcohol and, and isopropanol becomes acetone. Now, we will discuss heterogeneous catalyst. In heterogeneous catalyst, catalyst is insoluble in reaction medium and reaction take place on catalyst surface. Rate of reaction and selectivity dependent on active sites on surface. Uh, active sites are the part of the catalyst, substrate and hydrogen can adsorb on. By blocking or poisoning active sites, the reactivity of a catalyst is reduced and the selectivity is increased. This is the catalyst surface, uh, then hydrogen adds, hydrogen dissociation activation is happening here. And now adsorption of hydrogen, alkene adsorption, then, then alkene activation is forming and then hydrogenation is giving the predominantly seen product. Stereoselectivity also possible if you have a functional group, then in case normally hydrogen adds from the least hinder side and functional group away from the surface here. And here functional group attracted to surface and in this case hydrogen adds to from the opposite side. And this is the order of reactivity of various metal, platinum, palladium, ruthenium, palladium, C double bond C, then alkene, then carbonyl. So, this is the most used uh, first we will discuss linear catalyst which palladium, calcium carbonate and lead. So, this is lead oxide, lead acidity is used. By reduction of palladium chloride in a slurry of calcium carbonate followed by addition of lead acetate, the lead serves to deactivate the palladium sites. Further deactivation of the catalyst with quinolin or 3,6-dithia-1,8-octane dial enhances its selectivity, preventing formation of alkenes, acts as catalyst poison. It prevents over reduction and cisterns isomerization. Alkyne hydrogenation is always studio specific occurring by syn addition to give the cis alkene. This is the linear catalyst, 5 percent palladium calcium around the lead acetate quinoline. This is the linear catalyst and this is very effective for syn addition. Like here the alkyne phenyl acetylene goes to styrene, two hydrogen come from the same side and here a triple bond is getting reduced with this condition H2 linear catalyst butanol you get the cis olefin and this moiety is untouched. Carbon in moiety can also be reduced like this a hydroxy group is present and this is a ester group and carbonyl groups reduce alcohol. This is the trans with H2 palladium oxide acetic acid water. Here uh, platinum prefers CO reduction faster than C double bond C and this is the carbonyl reduction order acid chloride, ketone, anhydride, ester, carboxylic acid, amide. 
and H2PDC also can do the hydrogenation, heteroatom hydrogenation, and nitrile getting reduced to amine with H2 palladium hydroxide charcoal in methanol solvent, and then nitro group is getting reduced to the amine with this condition, and which is cyclizing to get the amine and then reduced. So, reduction is happening here. Amine followed by reduction. Azides can also be reduced to amine, and then we'll discuss rhodium molecular reaction. This is palladium catalyzed hydrogenation of acid chloride to aldehyde. Barium sulfate reduces the reactivity of palladium due to its low surface area, meaning it decreases the reducing power of palladium in order to prevent over reduction of the aldehyde. RCO cell hydrogen palladium BSCA4, toluene xylene, it gives the aldehyde and H cell. This is the example that. A carbonic chloride is reducing to aldehyde with H to 5 percent palladium barium sulfate quinoline S. S is that is the uh, safety region. Xylene reflux condition is gives the aldehyde. And here different groups are there. Acid chloride, lactone, and ketal is there. And with this condition selectively the acid chloride is reduced to the aldehyde. These are another examples of Rosenman variant. Here palladium charcoal is enough to do this reaction with hydrogen. You get the acid chloride to aldehyde. And here also acid chloride to hydride is possible, hydrogen, palladium, charcoal, quinoline, toluene and sodium acetate. So what is the mechanism here? The ligand which is generally solvent, solvent or Cl minus or quinoline, that this species is generated, then the oxidative addition is happening to generate this intermediate and now hydrogen has to, to get this intermediate and after the reductive elimination is happening, so these two groups eliminate and you get aldehyde and HCl. Rani nickel we will discuss last, so Rani nickel is prepared by leaching out aluminum under controlled conditions from a nickel aluminum alloy by treating the alloy it is powder with a concentrated solution of caustic soda. The slurry of finely divided spongy nickel particles so obtained is washed with large quantities of water till it is nearly free from free caustic soda. Rani nickel is highly pyrophoric when dry, thus it is always submerged under water or some solvent like ethanol, cyclohexane, dioxin. Rani nickel is used for the hydrogenation of alkynes and alkynes. Rani nickel is also used for reducing CH1 to CH1, which is desulfurization. This is the Rani nickel picture. And examples here, double bond is reduced. Also, benzene is reduced with hydrogen Rani nickel to cyclohexane, which on oxidation gives the adipic acid. Conversion of ketones to alkanes is possible first the uh, thioketal formation is forming with uh, thioketal with Br3 and dithion. Then Rani nickel gives the cyclohexane. Here also Rani nickel removing this thioketal moiety. And here these two bond desulfurization happening to get this lactam. More examples, here the CH2Br is going to methyl groups with Rani nickel. Here this bond is clipped to get this amine. Here this bond is cleaved with Rani nickel ethanol and interestingly here when it is divided then it becomes racemic. However, the sulfonate to SO to pH then you get a chiral. So this is chiral. So today we have discussed first the NPV reduction and then um, hydrogenation with metal catalyst. We have seen homogeneous heterogeneous catalyst and with homogeneous catalyst there are certain advantage. And we have seen first the Wilkinson reduction, which is a little bit less reactive, but we find selective reduction can be done. And also we have seen the steric hindrance is very important for Wilkinson catalyst. So less sterically double bond is getting reduced. And crafty catalyst, it is much more reactive than A. Here also tetra substitute olefins can be reduced. And also the hydroxy directed dash to selective reduction is possible. Then we have seen asymmetric hydrogenation defined ligand can be used with iridium catalyst based and dash to selective and enhanced to selective reduction will be possible. Then we have seen the linear catalyst. Linear catalyst is very useful. Here selectively you can reduce the alkyl to cis olefin. Then we have seen the Rosenberg reaction. Rosenberg reaction is very good to reduce the carbonyl chloride to aldehyde group. And lastly, we have seen Rani nickel. Rani nickel is reduced mainly double bond, also aromatic system like benzene, and its main application in desulfurization reaction. Defined thioketals as well as disulfides, moiety can be cleaved under this condition. Thank you.